Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another comic video. Today we're going to be going over Star Wars War of the Bounty Hunters Prelude Precious Cargo. Boba Fett, the galaxy's most dangerous hunter, claims the bounty of notorious smuggler and rebel officer Han Solo. Jabba the Hutt eagerly awaits Fett's delivery of Solo's carbonite frozen body to Tatooine, where the crime lord will exact his final revenge. Han Solo's debt is thus paid, but Boba is desperate for a payday himself. Tell Jabba, I've got his package, and he is frozen in Carbonite. He's alive. I'll be there. Make sure Jabba has my credits. Don't want any complications. Hmm? What is that sound alarm? I'll call you back. You're what? Nothing's ever simple. On his way to deliver Han Solo's body to Jabba the Hutt, Boba Fett made a discovery. The carbonite freezing cell was breaking down. It wouldn't survive the hyperspace route to Tatooine, so the Mandalorian decided that he would try to get the carbonite fixed. He pulled over at Nar Shaddaa, the smuggler moon and home world of the huts. There, he asked Doc Ragan to take a look and try and fix it. After a quick inspection, Ragan was able to figure out the cause of the problem. The carbonite cell had a faulty matrix. The Besselisk scientist would fix it easily, but it wouldn't be cheap. At that time, Fett was running low on credits, so he asked Ragan to repair Solo's carbonite cell first, and allow Boba to send him the payment later. Ragan was a friend of Boba Fett's, or well, a close associate who pretended to be a friend, and he knew better than that. Ragan would need payment up first, or else he wouldn't lift a finger. Fett couldn't let Solo die, so he needed a different plan. Realizing that he had Fett at a disadvantage, Ragan offered a compromise. If Boba Fett used his bounty hunting skills to kill an old enemy of the doctors, then Ragan would gladly repair the carbonite matrix. So basically just, you know, like a mission in a mission or a side mission in a mission. Basically the Bad Batch type of episode. But there was one problem. The woman that Ragan wanted dead was Weirman Lichter, and she was the champion of the local arena. In order to kill her, Boba Fett would need to fight through an entire tournament of opponents. That alone might have been daunting for the Mandalorian. But Weirman Lichter was also sponsored by the Kanji Huts. If Fett killed her, he would have a brand new faction of slugs who wanted him dead. Radigan had a solution for that too. He would disguise Boba Fett by spray painting his armor with a special black nano paint. By the time Fett arrived at the arena, he just looked like another competitor. Adorned in Beskar armor, when the Registrar asked for his name, Fett almost replied with his own, but he hesitated, thought for a second, and simply stated, Django. As the first match approached, Fett stood behind the arena's doors, where a spear was slung over his shoulder, and as he listened to the arena announcer introduce him to the audience, he couldn't help but be drawn back back to the one last time that he was in an arena when his father died. He could clearly remember the day, the opening battle of the Clone Wars. Now, I gotta say, Boba Fett's black suit is probably one of the only times that we see this, but it is extremely badass. I'm loving the look of it. It's really Batman Dark Knight-esque, and this could be, perhaps, sort of an entrance for Boba having, you know, maybe some different colored suits or armor in order to disguise himself further in the future. As the iron gears of the arena door began to crank open, Fett saw flashes of his past and the moment that he held his father's Beskar helmet in his hands. Fueled by the sudden rush of sorrow, Boba Fett made quick work of his first four opponents. In his first round, he took on Johnny the Sting, a three-eyed tentacled brawler. Fett wasted no time ending his life, shoving his black spear through his opponent's head. In the next two matches, Fett scored equally impressive headshots as he decapitated Skelly Khan and an unnamed warrior. By the fourth round, the arena audience expected nothing less than a flawless victory from Fett, and that's just what they got. Given a carbine rifle, Fett landed an easy shot on the forehead of his final opponent, which looked pretty freaky. A victory that brought him to his final match, the one against Weirman Lictor. When Fett entered the arena for his last fight, he immediately realized that something was different. His opponent, Lictor, was a giant, eight-limbed, non-humanoid alien. She was covered in thick white armor, and she had over ten eyes. Unfortunately for Fett, the arena had been designed to favor someone with an arachnid's form. Instead of fighting on ground, there were dozens of circular platform suspended from the ceiling, each connected to each other by powerful steel cables, similar to the type of habitats that Lictor had lived in as a child. Everything was rigged in the champion's favor. Fett lifted two small blasters to the side of his head, and the arena door slammed shut behind him. In a flash, Weirman leapt off the platform, firing two of her very own blasters at Boba. You look like a little beetle, all shiny and black. Delicious. Fett managed to avoid the incoming rounds and fired back with his own volley. His blasters could couldn't make contact with Lictor, so he switched to his wrist-mounted rockets. From beneath his fresh coat of black paint, a series of four mini-rockets launched towards Weirman. I'll wrap you up and drink you dry! Ah! 
Four missiles struck her white armor, knocking her back, and forced her to her knees. Fett took advantage of the situation and lifted himself into the air, using his jetpack. He extended his left arm towards Lictor, folded his hands down, and ignited his flamethrower. Her white armor protected her from the fire, and she quickly turned the tides on Fett. She shot a thread of white webbing from her spinnerets, which quickly attached to Boba's jetpack. Tugging at the Mandalorian warrior, causing him to lose hold of his two blasters, Lictor whipped him around the arena until he snapped free, causing him to bounce violently from platform to platform. Dazed, Fett tried to get up when he looked around the arena to see where Wehrman could be. He noticed that his jetpack had been ripped from his armor and was tangled in a spider's web. Before he had a chance to retrieve it, Lictor leapt down from above, her eight limbs ready to finish Fett off once and for all. As one of her razor-sharp legs reached out for Fett, the Mandalorian quickly retrieved a blade from his armor and sliced through the limb above its second joint, severing it completely. But that wasn't enough. There were seven other legs, each just as deadly. Lictor attacked Fett again, and this time she struck a near-fatal blow. Her leg pierced Boba's Beskar armor and went clear through his chest. Look at all your little juices running. What a waste! She taunted as she held Fett pinned on the ground. Lictor drew closer, her fangs smiling menacingly at Fett. She would have probably eaten him right there in the arena, if she could. Realizing that he might become a meal, Boba reached over to the digital input unit on his forearm and dialed in the command. His jetpack, which was dangling in Lictor's webbing just behind the pair, exploded into a massive plume of orange flames. The Kanji champion got the worst of the hit, and her entire body burned and charred. <laughs> The explosive blast threw both Wormen and Fett to the ground below. She wound up falling first, and one of the circular platforms that was hanging above the ground soon came crashing down on top of her. Like a spider beneath a shoe, Lictor was smooshed into the sand, which meant that Fett managed to win the battle. As he walked up to the teller to take his credits, covered in pink guts and slime, he said, I'll take my credits. We'll keep it safe for you. Don't worry. And after your next fight, Kenji, of course there won't be a next fight. I won't one. I'm done. Well, you owe us for the money we lost on Weirman Lictor. Had a lot bet on her to win. You can earn all that back for us in one fight. Then, if you win, you're good to go. Unless you'd rather just walk away. Keep it. I got somewhere to be. See, Fett could have taken those guys out, but he smartly decided that he had a larger prize to get. The bounty that Jabba would pay once Fett delivered Solo's carbon frozen body. So he left the arena and his prize money to go meet Doc Ragan on the outskirts of Nar Shadda. In the aftermath of the fight, Boba didn't find Find himself lingering on thoughts of the arena. Sure, it was his job as a bounty hunter to fight, and sometimes kill, not too different from what he had just done in that day's gladiatorial combat. But for some reason, when the arena doors hinged open, he was flooded with memories of the Battle of Genosis, and the fate that his father, Jango Fett, suffered that day at the hands of the Jedi. Perhaps Boba wasn't even sure why he suddenly relieved those memories. Maybe the simple sight of the arena reminded him of the last time he saw his father, a memory so painful that he would rather focus focus on mercilessly killing all of his competition than be forced to dwell on it for another second. As Jabba was chilling in his palace, Bib Fortuna contacts Boba Fett and tells him that he needs to deliver Han Solo immediately. However, once he got to his ship, he had noticed that Han Solo was stolen and the doctor was killed. So he told Bib, I'm not going to disappoint him, I'm on the way, but tell Jabba it's gonna be a minute. And so begins the War of the Bounty Hunters. Hope you guys enjoyed this issue. Let me know if you want me to continue the series. After this is Star Wars 13, and then so on and so forth. You got Bounty Hunters number 12, Vader number 12, Aphra number 10, and then Bounty Hunters number 1, and so on and so forth. Now, mind you, this comic came out last May, so there's a lot of catching up to do, but I'm really enjoying it. So, hope you enjoyed this one, and hit like if you enjoyed it. Catch you in the next video. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always.